I'm Jacqueline Bettedapur, Chair of the Cobb County Democratic Committee. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Cobb Democrats have gone virtual to bring candidates to voters through a series of virtual forums and candidate interviews. Today, we are speaking with Craig Owens, a candidate for Cobb County Sheriff. Craig is running against two other Democratic candidates in the June 9th primary election. Welcome, Craig, and thank you for joining us. And thank you for allowing me this opportunity this evening to speak. Our pleasure. So, Craig, why don't you take a few minutes um, to get us started and introduce yourself to voters. Um, tell us about your background and experience and why you decided to run for sheriff. Absolutely. And thank you again. Um, everyone, my name is Craig Owens. I'm a retired United States Army Command Sergeant Major. And I'm a current police commander for Cobb County Police Department, Precinct Number 2. I've been a lifelong Democrat, trusted by many of Cobb County's most trusted Democrats to be the next sheriff of Cobb County. The job of sheriff is one of the most powerful in any county. We see every day what happens when a sheriff believes they are the law. I believe we can and we must do better than what we have. We deserve transparency. We deserve a sheriff we can trust. And Cobb should have a sheriff who will make us all proud, rather than one who makes us shudder when they're on the news. 2020 is a year we can change direction. We have a prime opportunity and we deserve someone who is a real Democrat, not someone who faithfully voted Republican before they decided to run for sheriff. We need someone who has the experience, passion, and most importantly, the commitment to Cobb to give this job and every person who calls Cobb their home, the leadership it deserves. I am proud to have the endorsement of a number of proud Democratic leaders from Cobb County, including our last Democratic governor, Governor Roy Barnes. Again, my name is Craig Owens. Visit me on my website for craigforcobbsheriff.com, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Could you please briefly describe the role, responsibilities, and jurisdiction unique to the Sheriff's Department as opposed to the Cobb County Police Department? Yes, thank you. The Sheriff Office is responsible for the detention center, courtroom security, civil processing, white collar crime, fugitive apprehension, as well as a merit of Cobb Narcotics Unit. Unlike the Cobb Police Department, the Sheriff has statewide jurisdiction. What's also unique about the Sheriff's Office compared to the Police Department is this is a partisan position. You know, this election and this seat is our opportunity to turn Cobb blue. What does that mean for public safety? It means having a Sheriff who will lead with compassion, but heart of service. It means having a Sheriff who will implement people-centered policies like making sure women are paid just as much as men. And it means having a sheriff, uh, having a sheriff office that is collaborative and a community ordering approach as well. And what makes for a good sheriff? What should voters be looking for in your background, experience, character, and temperament to evaluate you as a candidate for sheriff? I think the hallmark of any leader is that they can be trusted, that they tell the truth, and that they are transparent when things are not right. You know, the old saying goes, the past performance is a clear indicator of your future performance. This election is about trust. Who do you trust clean up corruption? Who do you trust to lead with integrity? Who do you trust to have the character and temperament to step up when things get hard? I bring to the Sheriff's Office experience game from a fulfilling career at Cobb County Police Department as well as United States Army. I also bring lessons learned by earning a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, as well as attending the FBI Academy and training thereof. You know, Cobb deserves someone with a track record of truth, trust, and transparency to effectively manage this nearly $100 million budget and 700 person staff of the sheriff's office. I am not new to leadership at all and change management. I did it when I led the Cobb County Animal Control, making necessary improvements to save tax by taxpayers' dollars. I did it in the military where I managed civilians and soldiers, and I've done it as a police major who have earned the respect of my peers and the command staff. If you elect me as sheriff, I will restore the leadership Cobb deserves to the sheriff's office. You have to be bold enough to lead and humble enough to make adjustments. Thank you. Aside from the adult detention center, name three important changes you would put in motion during the first 100 days of your administration. Wow, good question. Uh, the long-term challenge is to restore lost confidence the public has in the sheriff's office. You know, the sheriff's inability to ensure the basic human rights of detainees at the county detention centers is emblematic of much larger issues. 
As Cobb resident, she deserves to know how the sheriff's office is spending your tax dollars. Cobb deserves to know that your sheriff's office is a representative of the entire county and every officer that shows up for work in a manner that should be that should reflect honorably toward Cobb County. And the three major changes that I would make, you know, I'll put forth the immediate steps on our sheriff office to earn a triple crown rating. That's the gold standard for sheriff's office nationwide. A far cry from where we are on today. A key marker of earning this rating is based on the health and safety detainees. That means we will address the decisions that, have, that has led detainees dying, unfortunately, in our facility because of inadequate health care or because of health care concerns that were just plain were not taken seriously. Number two, personnel. Now, organizational culture is only what its people allow it to be. As sheriff, I worked in this little culture where every Cobb County Sheriff Office employee operates within the same sheriff values. How we treat each other and how we treat those we interact with at our office will be the same no matter who they are or where they're from. I believe in third is the budget. I believe in a good steward, of being a good steward of public dollars. The sheriff's office manages a budget of nearly $100 million. Right now, it's hard to find out how that money is being spent, where there is waste and what needs to be put toward more resources. That's just not right. As sheriff, I will publish the office budget. Thank you. And um, going back to the adult detention center, what would you do to improve conditions there? You know, several things, but I think I can make it into this. Um, you know, as we work toward in the, our triple crown rating, a key area would be the top to bottom assessment of the operations at the detention center. Now, as sheriff, I make sure detainees are treated like human beings. That means they will have access to basic and essential health treatment. No one deserves to die because of our county's incompetence. Another important area we focus on is bringing the attention to, to the detention center is making it up to the modern day standards to ensure detainees have access ability to their attorneys. With today's technology, no lawyer should be prohibited from seeing their client because of the pandemic. You know, if we want to be, if we want, you know, if we want to formally incarcerate to succeed on the outside, we must equip them with the necessary skills while we have them on the inside to be productive citizens once they get out. So I, I would like to you know, institute a rehab and education program to ensure that our detainees have access to drug counseling, you know, mental health uh, counseling, anger management, you know, life training skills, as well as have to earn a GED if we can. So that they can walk out of our facility empowered and be productive members of our society and the attempts for them to not return. Great. Um, moving on to the 287G program, could you please explain to viewers uh, what that program is and um, do you whether you support it or not? Absolutely. Uh, the program is is mainly a federal government program. It's an immigration uh, for catching legal immigrants, and that is something I. I feel that is a federal government function and it should not be a county function. You know, and I hope that every Democrat running for sheriff is against 287G. You know, it doesn't reflect my values, nor does it, I think, it reflects the community values as a whole. You know, my back napkin calculation, you know, being a little sarcastic, of course, is uh, the cost of locking up one nonviolent individual who 287G criteria is about $3,000 a month. You know, that resource we could be spending on our community putting it back in the programs to bring the sheriff office closer to our people and to the people that we are sworn to protect and serve. You know, we will use the funds saved from no longer participating in this program to host quarterly town halls, to also have a district and quarterly meetings with our local governments, and to hire Spanish speaking community liaisons to help us to restore the trust between the community and the sheriff office. So do you see the need for a major restructuring of the sheriff's department, including changes in staff and personnel, or um, is it just a change in leadership that's required? I think, you know, my leadership style and approach will make it clear what my values and expectations are. You know, give, give everyone a fair shake and immediately address things that need to be changed. You know, as sheriff, I would do a top to bottom and a bottom to top assessment of the office. That includes meeting with deputies to hear from them directly and meeting with external stakeholders as well that interact with the sheriff's office to make sure I have their input. 
to make sure we are good students, I'm sorry, good stewards of our citizen trust. You know, as chair, if I would implement straight talk and a practice and open door policy and hold office hours where everyone who works for the office can meet with me with no questions asked, don't have to make an appointment. If I'm there, you need to see me, I'm available. You know, it's no secret that a cultural shift is needed at the sheriff's office. It would take hard work and a commitment but we can turn this office around and make it one where folks are proud to wear this uniform and serve the people of Cobb County. Great, so the sheriff is the CEO of a large organization with 700 employees and a budget of approximately $89 million. What experience do you have prepare, that prepares you to manage an organization of that magnitude? Well, I'm the only candidate in this election who brings more than 30 years of law enforcement and military experience, formal education and practical application, as well as management experience and budget expertise uh, to the Cobb County Sheriff's Office. You know, as a police major, I manage staff to help create the department's budget. And I work with internal and external stakeholders to help keep Cobb residents and visitors safe. As a command sergeant major in the States Army Reserve, I manage soldiers and civilians. I serve our country in the fight against global war terrorism during deployments. That required me to keep a level head when times were actually tough. So Cobb deserves a sheriff who has the experience and a temperament to lead Cobb County with integrity and honor. So recognizing that the vast majority of law enforcement officers are dedicated, conscientious public servants, um, there are times when some may act inappropriately and endanger those around them as well as erode the public trust. How would you handle staff who violate the public trust or do not follow authorized policies and procedures? Um, unfortunately, that occurs. However, you know, a hallmark of a good leader is that what we do when confronted by con controversy, you know, so do we sweep it under the rug or do we immediately act and face it head on and then bring a, a remedy immediately? I'm the one that's going to meet it head on and, and, and bring a remedy. With it. So the current way of doing things, is it worth it? We need transparency in the sheriff's office. That's why I want to put it the so Everyone who betrays the trust of this office is required to undergo an internal review so they appropriately can be disciplined if needed, and there are other steps to be taken to make sure we get them back on the right track. You know, we will be straightforward about any instance or any <laughs> Integrity is acknowledging what went wrong and identifying a solution so it doesn't happen again. But this type of leadership you can count on by me if I become your next sheriff of Cobb County. So the community is concerned about the lack of transparency emanating from Sheriff Warren and the department overall. Uh, what would you do as sheriff to increase the transparency and improve communication with the community the sheriff serves? Great question. I think, you know, that's one of my pillars I'm running on the transparency. And I think the lack of transparency in the sheriff office is one of, my, is one of the rain reasons why I'm running. It's just unacceptable. You know, as sheriff, I'll put in place internal and external plans and initiatives to restore trust and bring sunlight back into the sheriff's office. From publicizing department policies to hosting office hours to quarterly community briefings to improving technology, there are plenty of things we can do to increase transparency. We know that the coronavirus could very well come back later this year and, which have, and with a vengeance. And we know that all likelihood the pandemic is going to be high. So we must be diligent in establishing an effective disease pro policy and program now going forward. So we must all, we must start training our deputies now in our emergency management protocols to ensure that everyone can safely do their jobs and that we can also keep our detainees out of harm's way if and when this returns. So that wraps up um, the questions and answers. Um, if you'd like, uh, take a few minutes for a closing statement and any additional comments you'd like to add. Again, I'd um, like to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to the Democratic Party this evening. And I would like to close by saying a few things. Uh, you know, there are two reasons you should care about a Cobb County Sheriff Lex. You know, one, the current sheriff is, a, is abusing his power, costing you money and costing people their lives. And if you want to turn Cobb blue, it happens because of this race here. You know, I'm Craig Owens, I've been a lifelong Democrat, and I'm asking for your vote in a Democratic primary for Cobb Sheriff. This election, including primary, is a choice. A choice between strong ethics or no morals. A choice between leadership or lawsuits. 
a choice between restoring integrity or more lies, a choice between turning cob blue or remaining red. The coronavirus has shown us very clearly how important, strong, competent leadership is. Cobb Democrats, this is our opportunity. And I'm asking you to join with other Cobb Democrat leaders like for, former Governor Roy Barnes, who stands with me, and you're with me, please vote for Craig Owens for Sheriff on or before June 9th. And you can also, again, find me on my website at craigforcobbsheriff.com. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Craig. And on behalf of the Cobb Democrats, I'd like to thank you for running and wish you all the best. Um, and thank you for going virtual with us to speak to Cobb voters. Um, again, the election is on June 9th, but uh, we are encouraging everyone to vote by mail, absentee ballot. Uh, the, the COVID pandemic um, is um, causing some issues with uh, poll workers. Um, you know, our average age of a poll worker is 70 years of age, wow. and they are not um, necessary. They're not going to want to be working the polls on election day or for early in voting early in-person voting. So we run run the risk of um, long lines, overcrowding, and um, again, increased risk um, of exposure to COVID-19. So we encourage everyone to vote by absentee ballot. You can find more information on CobbDemocrats.org um, on the vote by mail process. So you can vote from the safety and comfort of your own home and you don't have to put your health at risk uh, to do so. So please, please vote and please consider voting by mail. So thank you all tonight and um, we'll, we'll see you soon. See you at the polls. Thank you. Thank you.